Good afternoon! Yes, we've went out late. I apologize we went out late, but we're going to Games Day! So everything's all kind of up in the air. Yeah, I have, I have one worry about us going to Games Day. What's that? I remember the last time we went to Games Day, you nearly crashed the car. Because you were laughing so hard with us playing Evil Dwarf. Yeah, Evil... Uh, we'll leave that for the backstage. Yeah, Evil Dwarf is a game that I created to try and... It's funny how we always come around to me being it's afraid not, of flying in these bloody episodes. It's not really episodes. a game, more of a torture session. It is a torture, yeah, it is session. A torture session. But it, it's a fun torture it's, session. It's a kind of like a, a, a silly it's, role it's play. On, an on-the-fly role-playing game. Yeah, where um, Justin is being, Justin is being um, hounded by an evil dwarf. The evil dwarf puts him in horrendous situations. Yes, and he's faster than me. Smarter than me, and, and he always, always will, will be. So it's um, so yeah, we'll 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 maybe bring that one up in in Games uh, Day uh, uh, or sorry in backstage. But yeah, on the, the last trip to Games Day we had, I was you holding this steering wheel trying to prize an eye open so you didn't go over a hedge. Yes, there, you know there's a policeman probably watching this, and you know they'll say that <clears throat> slap the wrist for that. But um, have I, have I, I was I was still being very safe. Yes. Anyway, um, welcome to the weekender. I am of course joined by. Justin, Hola. the bald, and Brother Lloyd, the not bald. Well, he's had a haircut. Well, actually, Lloyd is... I haven't, wait, wait, wait. I haven't even had the chance to say hola, like Justin, to be cool. Hola. <laughs> hola, yeah. Uh, but Lloyd is actually better trimmed around the beard area than I am. And normally, he's really beardy around there. That So much so, you could probably turn his head upside down and you couldn't tell the difference. This is about the least beardy I've been in three or four years. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I remember the first time I saw Lloyd, I thought it was an Ewok. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry. Anyway, we have a jam-packed show. So much to show you. So little time. So we're going to have to get hammer on. Get hammered on in here. So first off, oh my God, the Infinity Iguana. Mm. Oh man, have you seen that model? It is absolutely stunning. Justin, what do we know about it at this stage? Is there at, rules or anything at this for it? Stage, Carlos sent it through to me, he put a little blurb on it. Yeah. So it's Nomad's faction. Yep. But it'll work mercenary. Is this the first tag for the Nomads, is uh, it? Not, or? No, no, no. It's no? not the first. Because uh -huh. they, they had uh, another one, because you remember the Infinity Bootleg Mini? Yes. The Nomad one for it is sitting on the top of a Nomad tag of head. Of course, of course. Yeah, but no, this one works for Nomads. Yeah. And will work as a mercenary for the Kapu Kalki of Hak Islam. Mm. And I think I pronounced that right. Have Hak Islam got tags? They do. Uh, again, you'll have seen the pilot for it in Bootleg. In Bootleg, Which is the yeah. little one with her ass hanging up in the air. That we, is we, a topic for a future weekender. Yes, we have ideas on that. <laughs> that is definitely a topic uh, for a future yes, weekender. Now, you're telling me, or I, whenever this came out and I saw you working on it, I thought, oh, that's really cool. Mm. And you told me that whenever you shot the big guy, the little guy kind of jumped out of him. Yeah, once you finally destroy the tag, mm -hmm. the pilot pops out. Right, so that's so going to be one pissed off little nomad. The little guy here represents the pilot then. Yeah, because you can see, if you look at the armor, you can see the similarities around the chest plate to the chest plate on the tag. So you can see how oh, he has popped out off so of he there. Just, I, so and he's in the two arms armor the tag. and then pops out of it. Exactly. Oh, that's so really when sweet. When your has finally spent enough resources to take down the big heavy tag, there's still a heavy infantry sitting there. Yeah. We have a ton of is infinity this, stuff is, coming is this up. Is the first tag in this style with the arms? No, 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 because you've got the Joe like Scarface that? Turner, Yeah. which is and a mercenary he, one. He has that as well. Yeah, because I was looking at it today going, I, I, what's new about this? Have I not seen this before? Because you know, I was getting confused with I thought I'd seen the arms thing. Obviously, I have seen the arms thing before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But you see, the nomads, if I remember right, buy all their tech in the base bones of it from Panosiana or something like that. Yeah. I remember there was there was one piece of fluff they had bought something that was substandard tech for Panosiana, took it and made it absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, so it could be that they've picked up something from Pano or one of the other factions and repurposed it or built it themselves. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Goody is probably sitting at home watching this right now, pulling his hair out going, no, you're destroying my fluff. Well, I can't wait to actually see uh, more about it. Um, uh, Angel Heraldez done a beautiful step-by-step -step on how he painted it. Yeah, there's a, a link to that in its blast mm -hmm. on the homepage of Beasts of War, so if yeah, you haven't so seen if you, it, pop if over If you go in, pop look. over, have a look at that. It is fantastic. And uh, Angel very kindly got in touch and said, I'm going to give you Beasts of War guys some love. And he's given us an exclusive step-by-step -step of how he's going to paint Isabel McGregor. Oh. All right, I have to bring up the artwork for this because yes. she is so cute, so pretty. 
You know me, I love my anime. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Or she's, something else as you would put she's it. She's awesome looking. She's wearing tartan. This yeah. this this lady, she's just gonna give you a Glasgow kiss. <laughs> right in there. So yeah. I love it. It's I love right it. Up your alley, isn't she, Justin? It's just really cool, sort of a punk style chick. So uh, that's kicking off the news. In other news, our friends at Battle Systems Terrain are this close to launching their Kickstarter. They've been at it for, they've been working behind the scenes for months. I think something like seven months these guys have been organizing, manufacturing quotes and stuff like that. And they're finally going to release pre-printed card terrain that's already die cut. Mm. Okay, it'll be about 1.5 millimeters thick beautifully printed yeah. gorgeous textures you just pop this stuff out there's little plastic kind of clips that keep it all together mm. and you create some epic looking sci-fi interiors well i mean like we have a, a couple of three pictures so we have one that looks like a generator room another yep. that's a cryostasis chamber and then one that's a really big nice command center i like the cryostasis chamber we, we, mm. uh, we've been waiting on this well i've been waiting on this because print out terrain is great but Printing it and cutting it and stuff, it's just so tiny. But this right. is it, yeah. We have one piece behind us. Yes, this piece uh, here. Yes. Uh, I remember whenever it was built, it took something like two days of about five hours of work yes. to build the thing. But that, that was, that was Daryl building it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's, I no, have tried to build that stuff myself. It does take a bit of time. It's got to be said, right? Uh, I'm a massive, massive fan of printable terrain. Mm. I, I really, really am. And uh, we've done the printable stuff that you put on to create ruined city blocks and stuff like that. I'm a huge fan of it. However, it's got to be said that by the time you've done it, it's not much of a cost saving, really. You know, it's... Printable terrain is for the hobbyist. If you're a hobbyist and you want to make stuff, printable terrain is the way to go because yeah. you're, you're sitting there and you're cutting and you're folding. It's a hobby in and of itself. Yeah. But if you're a gamer, now Battle Systems is something that's going to be right up your street because you just put, up it out, pop it out, Stick, yeah. stick, stick. Yeah, no painting. And then, yeah. and then when you're finished, pull, 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 pack it all away. Yeah, flat pack. The no, they're not the first trying. to do it. Worldworks Games were doing this with their TerraClips, but I think that the, the I think the card Worldworks. with TerraClips though was a, was a lot thinner. Uh, and the, the widgets hugged it really tightly, so if you built yeah. a square block, you wouldn't be able to but get the, the thing, thing apart. Was, easy. It was all very fantasy. Yes, mm. yes. Well, this see, is it was designed full for Malifaux. Mm was yeah. the system it was built for. So it, it does fit within the world it's designed for. Now yes. we've got something that's right Now up we've up got up. something right up uh, right up our streets for the sci-fi genre. I think, yeah. I think you could play Dead Zone on this stuff too. Probably. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the only thing about Dead Zone, Dead Zone obviously works in square zones and whatnot, so you'd have to take that into account. Mm -hmm. But for 40K, Infinity, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much, pretty much any. Warpath. Uh, yeah, Warpath would work great on that. Um, yeah. I can build dust some. could be kind of cool like that. It, that would be excellent for dust, actually, um, for dust warfare, if you were using lots of kind of units, because it would be kind of like the inside yeah, of... Yeah, so you, you could build a, a nice little Nara dungeon thing. crawler mission for The it. other great thing about printable terrain is, uh, th from our own experiments, and over the, between, over the next weeks and months, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some videos on this, because I want to show you guys this. It, 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 it's they take weathering sprays mm. and weathering um, weathering things really really well. Mm. So yeah, you can build um, a paper craft building, mm -hmm. but don't stop there. Yeah, lightly weather it. Don't use, choke it. Use some weathering sprays and stuff like that on yeah, it because you have to be careful. all it does is blend it all together really really beautifully, yeah, and it all it. starts to tighten up. Especially uh, you, I guess one of the things. The white is, edges. Yes, and the vibrancy starts to dull down a little bit because mm. uh, one of the issues you have with the paper terrain, and you know, we print the paper stuff on a good quality paper. Mm. A good quality paper has a kind of like a satin finish. It's not a gloss finish. It has the a sheen satin. Is real. Cuts mm. down the sheen. So get the weathering sprays on there. Get the matte sprays on there. It all really starts to tie in, and it's um. You have to be careful it. though with the type of paper you use. Yeah. The reason some of the stuff we do takes the weathering, or weathering sprays quite well is because it's that thick Heavy. sheened paper. Yeah. Yes. But if you're using really matte, cheap paper, yeah. yeah. If you spray it, it'll probably just soak up the. Yeah. The, Tesco's finest. Soak it up mm -hmm. and kind of. Yeah. Spray it. So be careful with what sort of paper you're using. Yeah. You want something that uh, that light dusting of weathering spray will settle on top of it, 
rather than being absorbed by it and sucked into it. Yeah, but again, it. if you're dusting it properly and it is only a light dusting at a time and giving it time to dry between, you shouldn't have an issue. With some cheap papers, Justin, you may well have an issue. Yeah. Probably, you know, possibly not. It's worth it's worth trying. Yeah. The other thing that we have found, and, we, and if you go back, if you're a backstage, or go back to you see... Um, one of the original gamescapes that we put out where it was the it was a kind of like ruined buildings okay one of the things we did was mix up a kind of like a magi mix so if you've uh, if you've watched a gamescape you'll hopefully see us actually mixing up magi mix the the recipe for it but we mixed up a gray kind of a magi mix which was pretty much um like pva um polyfilla or spackle i think you guys in america call it uh, maybe a little bit of grit and some paint, black paint, and that takes it into a grey. You want to get the consistency of it just right. And then I dabbed that along the edges of the foam core that we stuck the stuff onto either side. Yeah. And then stippled it here and there on top of the actual surface. Yeah, just to give it texture. Yes, it gave it a beautiful texture. Now, a lot of people, when they're doing their paper craft, okay, they just take a big black marker and they mark around the edges of everything. Mm -hmm. I find that that can make things start to look a little cartoony. Everything starts to look Disney outlined. Mm. Um, so what I would suggest you have a look at is doing up a magic mix of a particular color mm -hmm. and spackling that along the edges and you, you get a yeah. kind of a texture. Yeah, so if you got something maybe like, depending on what you're doing, if it's a wood building, do a brown one. If it's a concrete block, do a gray one. Yeah. You know, yeah. So something, different paint for something like that. On the topic of paper terrain. Yeah. Drop Zone Commander. Is out. It's out. Today! It's out today. What an awesome, awesome set. I'm going to talk at length, well, not at too much length, but at fair degree of length um, in backstage about Drop Zone Commander because I have played the most awesome game. Have you? Oh, yes. yes. It's going to come out as a, as a battle report. Um, uh, or kind of like a demo game slash battle report. Well, it'll be two to three parts. But I want, I want to talk about the game mechanics. Oh, it's so good. It is so, so good. I had a blast, an absolute blast playing this game. Um, but one of the things that's in the box is obviously the the card, the card stock to create the city board. Were you playing the starter set? Yep. We played exactly a starter set with the contents of what you'd get in the starter, starter set. Mission? And played the starter mission. Right. And it was superb. Um, well, out of the board came enough to do a three, a three foot... Let me get this right. A three foot by four foot board. Right. Okay. The two posters go down to give you your kind of your road layout. Yeah, your city streets. And then you have your your buildings and stuff like that you put on it. Uh, one of the great things about Drop Zone Commander is you're targeting the buildings to collapse the buildings and the buildings come down and kill men and vehicles and stuff like that. What, there. what happens when a building comes down? Do you lift it off or how do you represent the fact that it's come down? Um, yeah, you would lift it off. Um, I... There may well be ruined building, building stuff possibly somewhere on the horizon, who knows, but, and that would be really awesome. Yeah. But the cardstock's great. We, um, as, a, as a demonstration, right, um, we said, right, well, do you know, we'll just play as if it's come straight out of the box, literally 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. The guys used a stapler, you'll probably want to use glue, so it'll take you a bit longer, but they used a stapler, click, 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 bang, all the buildings were ready. And it, it was just great. I am definitely, definitely going to do a gamescape where we build a drop zone commander table, where we do, where we use the, the cardstock, mm -hmm. but we're going to take it two or three levels up. Uh, because I love this game. I, I love it. We two have or three to. Levels up. You mean like skyscrapers up, or you mean two or three no, levels? No, no, no. Extra layers of detailing and uh, super yeah, detailing. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go beyond just sticking the things on a on a table. On a table. Right. That wouldn't be an episode of Gamescape or, or you know a series of Gamescape. I want to take it and do something. You want to see how far you? Yeah, can I want take to see it. how far we can take it. Because it, it's just awesome and it deserves a gorgeous, gorgeous board. And I'm telling you now, guys, if you have it, get it down. And again, think about weathering sprays and stuff like that on it, and you'll just start to blend the thing just so beautifully. Uh, I've got some, I've got some loopy ideas, but if you want to hear more about that, yeah, definitely hop on to to backstage day one. and watch XLBS with us because I'm going to talk more about the about the game itself and what I really liked about it. As I said at the start of the show, 
Games Day. We're going to Games Day. Yes, yeah. there's been a complete dearth of 40k content on Beast of War. Um, all been well. We'll have we have it sorted, and you guys will find out what's been going on very shortly. But now that we're getting to the stage where that's resolved, I wanted to get us all back into it, and we haven't we haven't done a lot of it in a while. I've got to say. I've really enjoyed the variety that's been going out across BC4. That will not change. We're going to continue with the, the, the great range of games and getting other new games and stuff like that in. Um, but I want to address the balance again and get, get our 40K content built up and flowing. So to do that, I've kind of been doing little things to try and get us all into the, into the mood. And one of those things is we're going to Games Day. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And to... I'm even more excited now having seen what Forge World are bringing out. Um, I can't see us being at the front of the queue. I definitely see it being sold out by the time we would get to the front of the queue. I'm not even sure I could afford it even if I got to the front of the queue. But let's talk about some of the stuff that they've got. Firstly, the Horus Heresy Book 2 Massacre. Justin, this uh, has got to be, this has, has got to be Istvan. It has it? to be the drop site oh. massacre from the Horus Heresy Book series. Okay. One of my favourite... Favorite, favorite book series has been the Horus Heresy. Mm. I've got to admit, when I first, uh, whenever I was first trying to get into 40k fluff, I was really, really struggling with it. Like, I mean, really struggling with it. Yeah, it's finding that <laughs> start point in this big, massive block. Yes, of stuff. it's a difficult, difficult thing to get in around because, to be fair, reading the codexes was was horrendous at the time. Um, I've, I've often said about that the, the use of language and, uh, within Pig Latin. has been pretty lots atrocious. And lots of Pig Latin. You know, uh, yeah, it's not only Pig Latin, but uh, you know, uh, someone will say, oh, so you don't like big words. It's not about big words. It's about whenever you're reading something and you're getting into it, there's a flow. And if you continuously chuck in th thesaurus bait, yeah. The whole time, oh, there's a simple word, yeah, basically but it's little, too simple. I, I need to come up with something ten times more complex yeah. for so that it's statement. So that little men, mental brick wall that you just keep tapping it into. It constantly drops you back out of what you're trying to read. Yeah, so there's, going, huh? there's an art to writing that absorbs you in there. And if you're just trying, and I sometimes think that these guys were just throwing this stuff in there just to try and make the whole thing sound more grandiose... Mm. They didn't need to do it. It was grandiose anyway. All it did was just continuously pull me back out. So what did I try? I went and I bought an audio CD. Yeah. Do you remember the yes. one? Driving around in the car, listening to this audio yeah. CD. I listened to this audio CD about 15 times, and I still didn't understand what was going on. He walked into the middle of the room. There was 10 miles wide. Yes, yes. 15 miles high or something. He, he entered the whatever it was. This building was 35 miles wide. He walked to the middle of the room. <laughs> well, that took him a bloody long time, didn't it? it was, <laughs> so, yeah, it was stuff that, that like that. That one yeah. line just ruined that entire, <laughs> that entire yeah. picture. Just this one dude walking for ages and ages and ages trying to get into the middle of this room. So well, that he did, just walked there. So that didn't work for me. Mm. I then um, realized that there was an old series of graphic novels done by... Oh, Boom Studios, I think, did them. Right. And um, I think I might still have one of those kicking about. It, well, if you do, it's mine. <laughs> so they were great. I got a Black Templar one. Mm. I got a Orc one. And I got uh, one for Warhammer as well, which was uh, about the um, Empire or something like that. God's got too simple a word. He sourced them. Yeah, I sourced you them. You put was, more complicated words in here. Uh, it was eBay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I, so I got these, and I love them. I've since actually met one of the artists who did the cover art for it, and I nice. got him got him to sign it. So I, I, it's, I, I think he's ended up a very good friend of mine, actually. Yeah, well, note you signed it, and then he's lost it by the signs. No, of it. he's nicked it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I see shiny. They you were mean. good. They were really good, actually. The, the Black Templar one especially was really good because I got a, I got a really good sense of the, of the, the kind of the, the devotion of the Black Templars. Mm. So they, they were good, but 
there was still a lot more. Mm. I still wasn't hooked. Yeah. I then picked up Horus Rising. Yep. Okay. And I've got to tell you. You fell in love with it. No. No. <laughs> no, I hated it. <laughs> so what happened was I was reading it. Right. And I, I'd got to almost the halfway point. And by this stage, I was like, oh, God, this is horrendous. This is absolute garbage. It's so slow. I was on the toilet at the time. And I said to myself, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this to the end of the chapter. And if this hasn't got any better, I'm just giving up. Right. So as an end of the chapter, you mean whenever you're ready to pull the cacks back up? Yes. By that stage, I'd be finished. Right. I like to take my time. <laughs> so there we are. And I read. And I've got to admit, the very next page. Just dragged you in. Bang. It clicked. Mm. And I've read and read and read and read since then. And I absolutely loved it. Well, what do you mean the next page clicked? What? The very next page, when I read that, it just, the book clicked for me. I don't know why, it just did click for me. And it was fabulous. The, the whole story of uh, Loken is absolutely fabulous. And then that brings me right back to the end of my, my point. Yep. The battle for Istvan, the massacre, where Loken... Um, and Horus. And, well, yeah, well, basically Horus betrays yeah, betrays he, him. He tricks and all the loyalists they into coming to the planet. blast this virus onto the planet yeah, to wipe out the planet. Yeah, after all the loyalists are deployed. And Loken dies. Um, oh no, sorry, it wasn't loyalists. It was the members within their own chapters that they didn't think would turn to Horus. Yes. My bad, sorry yeah, guys. It was, it was horrific. The <coughs> ultimate betrayal. Mm. These, were, these were friends betraying friends. Yes, who had fought and, together for centuries. Yes, and, you know, and that, that is the worst kind of betrayal when, when if somebody's supposed to be your friend and yeah. they betray you. So. There you go, peeps. Any of you that wanted to read it, don't need to read it. <laughs> no, but it, you, you should read it. Because <laughs> right. it's all the interplay between just all the different snippet, characters. Just a snippet you give away. Such as dies, such as dies, <laughs> they <laughs> die, they well, die as well. Do you, do you want me to give away the biggest plot twist here? No. no. Horace loses. No. no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, so anyway, um, that story is incredible. And... Uh, uh, as we've we've said, we're, we're, this is what we hope that this book's about. We could fun. be entirely wrong. You'll have to forgive us. We're just trying to get back into this thing at the moment. Yeah. So that book, um, I can't wait to see it. And somebody we know is bound to buy that book, oh, and yeah, we'll yeah. hopefully get a look through it. Uh, I'm I'm betting it'll be either Swampy or Mike. Yeah. Now we're not finished at that. There's other things like there's the Word Bearers Ashen Circle. If we will get them up for you to have yeah. a quick look at. Um, lovely, lovely looking jump troops. I'm a big fan of this uh, pre heresy stuff and mm -hmm. the heresy stuff. I love stuff. the jet engines. Oh, the yeah, great the jump packs. I like um, it's nice seeing all the older stuff being brought out and actually shown yet. Oh, I like their cleavers. Yeah. yeah. The axes. Yeah. There's a, a fantastic looking diorama of. Uh, Ferrius Manus versus Fulgrim, I think this Ferris was. Ferrius Manus versus Fulgrim. Fulgrim had already came out, mm -hmm. but this was designed from the ground up to be a two-part mini diorama. Yeah. So Fulgrim got released first. Uh -huh. Now Ferris Manus has been released, and the two connect together. On that base. It's all and paint it, and it's just, just, just an just epic duel between them. Just before you move on, he's like the Swiss Army knife. Of yeah, he has a, a servo harness on his back. Yeah. Like, I think he's, he's got Iron Hands or Iron Warriors, one of the two. He's got a flame there, Iron Hands. he's got mm -hmm. a plasma, he's got a chainsaw. Yeah, basically these guys chainsaw. revered tech. Yeah. You know, in the fluff. And then we have my favorite. Flyer. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my oh, god. So if I was struggling to get back into 40k, which yeah. I wasn't really, but if I had been struggling, this one, this, this, this changed it. The Fire Raptor, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's this, stunning. What I love about it is the World War Two esque kind of gun mounts on the side. Yeah. I just yeah, the ball, the ball it looks kind of like what a lot of people have done with their toasters. Yeah, the storm yeah. toaster. Yeah, of course you know it's Once they um, ripped it apart and improved it. It kind mm. of. I want one of these, right? Yeah. Maybe two. But mm. is it? It'll take me a while to save up, but I want these. But is and it the model or is it the paint job? It's the model. the model, definitely. It's the model. The paint job's great. I really like what... The, you've raised an interesting point. Forge World don't paint the heavy metal way, right? Mm. Forge World paint the way I like to paint, yeah. which is a bit more grubby, a bit more dirty looking, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, I find the Forge World schemes easier to achieve 
mm. than the heavy metal schemes. And um, yes, but heavy metal is a, a specific set of steps that you must go through, or it doesn't turn out correct. Yeah, I, I really like the paint job that they've done on it, mm. but I adore the model, and I want two of these just for my Space Marine army, mm. because I feel um, that <laughs> he wants two. Yeah, <laughs> ninety-five quid. That's not being greedy. I want yeah. two of these. Uh, I, it'll be like it'll be like my my journey towards uh, Mars pattern warhounds. Mm. I've never got one. I've always wanted them. I've never got them. Um, this will be this will be something else. I've always wanted, and I'll never someday get someday when the pension comes in. To be fair, I, I know I'm not alone in that, and I know that pretty much the entire 40k world is in that boat since Workshop decided to release the seven thousand pound Space Marine chapter. Yeah, that was <laughs> so, a moment of so, me going, "Is this thing coming built and painted for you? <laughs> what the hell?" It, it it was a stonking product. I thought it was fantastic. But I want, I want these, and, uh, and I think you could put that into a normal Space Marine army, no problem at all. Yes, it's from the heresy period. Uh, Pre-heresy, if I'm not mistaken, because yes, that's Iron Warriors. But okay. plenty of technology mm. has made it that far. Oh, yeah. the, you know, so you could have a chapter like mine, the, the Sons of Eon, that have been out there on the fringe and been looking after stuff and yeah. whatnot. And they could come back and they might have yeah. these. Or perhaps find an abandoned monastery from a field chapter, you know, failed in its infancy during the... This the always, end of the heresy, the age of strife. This always jars me a bit. Mm -hmm. I look at the the, the pre-heresy stuff and I think, well, that just looks cooler than the supposed more up to date. Yeah, but if you yeah, think it does look cooler though. If you think the length of time from when the emperor fell to now has been a slow, gradual decline of technology, things being forgotten and things just rusting and being repaired and kept running. And then the centurions turn up. Yeah, they had them out in the garden shed, which kind of bonks that whole idea. But well, yeah, they were in the garden yeah. shed. So, um, yes, that, yes, that has got me there. Yes, that is something of, yeah, I want one. Okay. Now, I wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. In a continued effort, it's Game of the Weekend. Right. And this is going to be an interesting one. Yeah. In a continued effort, I was uh, thinking, right, I want to continue getting into the whole feel of the 40K stuff. So, Game of the Weekend is Relic. Relic. Which is a beautiful, beautiful looking board game with beautiful components. Yeah, all the little busts and stuff that look really good. It's really fantastic. Cool. Let me open it up and show you guys what you get. So, um, oh, let me get the lid off. Right, that can go to one side. Um, now, I've, of course, have opened this up. We've been playing at it. Um, you get That's your advertising stuff. advertising stuff. You get your bags. You get your rule book. This is not a... Right, okay, for anybody that's played Talisman... Um, you'll you'll pick this game up pretty quickly, okay? If you're if you're kind of new to all this stuff, you're going to struggle with this game a little bit because it, it's so that, a, is it a heavy read to get into? It's not that it's a heavy read. There's a lot of little things to try and remember. Um, there's a lot going on. There's an awful lot going on all 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 at once. So but there's a bit of housekeeping. Yes, there's quite a bit yeah. of housekeeping actually. So it's. It's not insurmountable. Mm. You know, you definitely will be able to play it. It will be a lot easier for you if you have somebody in your gaming group that's familiar with Talisman or has played Relic. But even if you haven't, if you're just two or four friends and you fancy getting into this, all you have to do is just pick up a copy and just, just keep at it. After a couple of games, you will get into it and it'll all start to, to yeah. fall into place, okay? Right. So you've got your rules of play. Uh, the rules of play are pretty clearly laid out, to be fair. Um, so... You know, for if you don't have the support of somebody that's ready to play it, don't be worrying about that. The artwork's lovely. Next up, we have it does, the board. That's why I reached for it. I mm. want to have a closer look. The board is beautiful. Okay, um, as you would expect, the, the board is huge. The, the board is pretty darn big, actually. <laughs> so, huge. so there's the board. Okay, and. The artwork on the board is gorgeous as well. To be fair, when I first saw the board, I thought, oh my God, that's a little bit busy, isn't it? Mm. But it does start to make sense to you fairly quickly after you play. So border and border, I think, there and there. Yeah, so what happens is basically the entire game starts around the outer the rim, track. okay? Right. So you're on this outside track. Um, what, you're, what you're trying to do is you basically roll dice and the dice tells you how far you move. Mm -hmm. So if you roll a six, you move six squares. As you move around, if you land, and let me try and get this in here. So if you landed 
for example, here, this little red seal, these wax seals, tell you which deck to pull from. So let me start to whip out the decks. So there, let's see if there's any other decks in there. So uh, we have one other deck for character cards. Or okay. is it events cards? I'll get them in a second. So let me show you the decks. And uh, again, my apologies. It's a difficult game to kind of explain in one sitting. So I, if I get a couple items wrong here and there, forgive me, but you will get the general idea of what this game is about. There should be another deck of things, uh, deck of cards in there. Nope. No. <laughs> oh, there's these. I think it's the only oh, other card. There we go. Ah. There we go. Okay, that's a lot of cards. Jeez. Yes. One deck of cards. Are you sure that's one deck? Yeah, that's well, one deck. Three so. different colours. Okay, so you've passed them over. So. I'll put the insert back into the box. These are kind of like your event decks, okay? So you have red events. So now, let me start to pull this into place, okay? Right. So you have red events. You have blue events, and you have yellow events. So basically... Are you going to stay like that for the whole video? <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of cut this week. As you move along, okay, if you'd landed on here, you would draw a red what? event. And in this case, the red event is an evil son's killer can, and he has a, uh, he has a strength of eight. So let me show you. Each player gets one of these dials, and if you pass me the other cards, uh -huh. you actually pick your player at random, so you don't actually know who you're going to be. So let's do it as if we were going to do it. So Justin, pick I, one. I will be this guy. Uh, Lloyd, pick one. Oh, I actually got the one I wanted. I'm a commissar. Okay. Uh, I am a... I am a canoness uh, from the well, ba Sisters of Battle. You You're a Lloyd? commissar. What are you, Lloyd? Inquisitor. Um, Ordo. Ordo Malayas, Inquisitor. Okay. So, Demon Hunter. And what happens is you get your little dials, okay, and you slide that into the dials as so. Okay, and let me describe to you what, what's happening here. So, on this card, it'll tell you what your starting strength is. So, in this case, it's two. So you spin the dial round to the number two. Your willpower is four, so you'd spill, spin, spin, pardon me, the blue one round to four. Uh, your cunning is three, you'd spin it round to three, and your starting life is four. Up here is your experience track, and you have a little kind of uh, token. So let me just pull this out. So your token would go in there and you'd gradually move up to 12 experience. And then your token matches the color of your bust. Now, let me show you these because the busts are beautiful. We'll try and get some pictures of the busts up for you guys to have a look at. But the busts themselves are absolutely stunning. And I think as sculpts go, they're, as gaming pieces go, they're probably the finest board gaming pieces I have seen. Let's see some of them. Um, yeah, have a look at the Space Marine. Um, or the Assassin. So this would be the bust for this uh, character here. And you put the little green one in there, for example. It just pops and, into the bottom. Yep. Pops into the bottom. Oh, there we go. You have a green token there. And then you have some actual green skulls which you can use for various but bits and pieces. Yeah, I don't want to go into too much depth here, guys, because I'm yeah. trying to give you an idea of the game. Mm. So basically what happens is you explore around. In this instance, if I'd landed on the red, I would have battled that evil son's kill a can. If I'd beat it, I would have got to keep it as a, as a trophy. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, it sits there, and the next person that lands on that square has to fight it. Right, but so, do they also draw another card, or is it just that one? No, until it's it done? would be just that one. If yeah. he was on a square that had two of these, you would fight him and you'd draw another card to get the second one. So Got he it. counts as that right. one. And the color just represents which deck you pull from. Yes. So yeah. here we have double yellows. So in that case, the first person that would go there would pull two yellows, and he would have, and have uh, to fight both. a feral chaos renegade and a mutant bandit, and he'd have to fight both. And he'd have to fight them 
based on his cunning, okay, because they're yellow up in that corner, and they're a one, and I believe that they would actually fight as one person, as one yes, attacker. Yeah, so my Commissar could beat them because he has a cunning of three. He couldn't beat this because he only has a strength of eight. Yeah, correct, but what you do is you take your strength and you add it to a dice roll, All right. and then the player to, I believe, to your left or to your right, uh, rolls for the attackers, Got it. and then they add theirs to a dice roll. The beauty of it is, exploding sixes in this game, ah. and everybody knows I'm a massive fan mm -hmm. of exploding sixes. So you always have a chance of winning. So if you roll a six, you get to roll again, mm -hmm. and add that number to your total. So as rubbish as you could be, if you're a lucky dice roller, you, you have a way out. Yeah, so if you're some piddly little guardsman, you still have a shot. Uh -huh. There are special points on the board, like for here, this is called uh, St. Anita's Sanctuary, okay? And what, uh, there's two little options here. One is gain one life, you may spend an influence, and your influence is kind of like your money in this. Right. And your influence is these little uh, Kila chits here, okay? And I believe you start with three of them, uh, three of these each, so. Um, you would spend one of those and you gain a life. You want to be doing that in this game because this game is brutal. You will lose lives very, very rapidly. Almost, from the moment you start, you're going to be losing lives because right. the, uh, there's no mechanic in this to say that the monsters are more powerful as you go on in the tracks. Right. Okay? So you can meet Carnifexes, Bloodthirsters... On turn one. On turn one. Okay. okay, that would be scary. Yeah, no, you will only lose one life by being beaten by them. They're not going to just wipe you out <coughs> entirely. But if you get an opportunity to buy a life or do something like that, you'll want mm. to do it. Now, what else? Basically, the other thing you have is you have missions. And you start with two mission cards, okay? And it's missions are the things that you're trying to complete. Mm. So your entire game at the start is going to be spent on this outer circle. Because complete the stuff. If you go in there, you're going to get your ass kicked. Because if you don't have a relic, which is what you're completing your missions for, you automatically lose lives. Okay. Oh, inside there. Yeah, in right. the, in the anything out fr what further does this in. Represent? Is this the warp you're in? Or what? Warp yeah, fire or say it's sort? like you're you're in the warp. So missions are kind of like. Objective, spend one or more influence while resolving the prey ability on the Antian Shrine World space. Or spend one or more influence while resolving the recover ability on the Apothecarium Cepha, Cepha space, okay? Mm -hmm. So the missions can be very, very specific, and it could be like try to land in, a, in the same square as one of your opponents, yep. and when you're in, when you're in that square, you complete the mission and you could also maybe do something like take something from your opponent or okay. whatever. When you have completed three missions, you can trade those for a relic. Right. But some of the other things that you can do with missions is some missions can actually become assets. Okay. Right. So let me try to find one that actually has an asset. So here's one here. It's called Cleanse the Hive World. Win a battle on a space in the Hive World area, which is kind of over there. Mm -hmm. um, you may keep this card as a completed mission or take it as an ally asset. To take it as an ally, place a character token on it, and it gains the following skill bonus, which is plus three... To your cunning. To your cunning. That seems really, really good. So you may want to keep that rather than trading them in. Mm. But if you traded them in, you trade them in for a relic. And then once you have a relic then you can start to move further, further in. in. Right. And what, so, just trying to get to the center, or how do you win this game? Yes, you're basically trying to get to the center. So once you, you go out there, you're playing a very similar kind of game on this track. Right. But once you get in to the middle, mm -hmm. then it's basically you're just rolling to try and move around the maze. So this bit here is kind of like the final steps that right. you're taking so basically, to complete the mission. Out here and out here, you're building yourself up to being able to do that big final push for the victory. Yeah, so you're to you're get in. To make your way to there. And if you have your missions, so here's the most simplest mission here called the Mystery Beyond. It kind of sits in there, and the special rule is whoever gets to the middle first wins. Right. But your missions get a lot more, uh, a lot more complex. In this one here, you get to fight 
you know, kind of a bloodthirster in this one here, trying to hunt down the lost flagship of St. Anita's, and so on and so forth. So there's five missions in there. Now, originally, I thought five missions, so you only get to play the game five times, and then that's it. But it changes dramatically based on the character you have. So a Space Marine is going to have a very different skill set from an Inquisitor. Mm. And an Ogren is going to be all strength. Uh, somebody like a rogue trader, trader is going to have more cunning. Yep. So you start to get the idea of how this game changes. So, if you're into your 40k, um, or just starting to get into your 40k, it's one way to kind of um, expose yourself to a lot of the 40k kind of lore, monsters, terminologies, and things like that. Um, well, that, that, that that's a good point, because you can play 40k forever, and not, not really expose yourself to any of that. You just learn the mechanics of how the game plays. Look yeah. Your unit stats and play. Unless you're, unless you're a tournament player and going to tournaments, which I highly recommend now, having been to a tournament and <coughs> won a game. <laughs> I would highly recommend tournaments now, and I intend to go to a lot more myself. But if you're trying to get into a game, um, th this is one way to do it. And, then, you know, to be fair, this is one way where I could maybe have got a more deeper kind of understanding of some of the, the interesting characters and interesting monsters like fire dragons from the Eldar, swipping hawks from the Eldar, plague cultists, um, Eldar rangers, striking scorpions, warp spiders. These probably need a shuffle. Um, that's all great. So if you're, if you're looking at it from a 40k point of view, there's quite a lot to like about this game. But, and there had to be a but. What size of a but? <laughs> yeah, it's a, a big pretty butt? big but, yeah. If you're looking at this from the point of view of actually being an enjoyable game, as somebody who likes to play board games, you probably want to give this one a miss. I'm sorry to say that. It's game of the weekend. I didn't particularly enjoy it as a game for the following reasons. One is, it's just all random. Everything is random. You're doing your random movements and stuff like that there. You're just going round and round in circles. It's, there's, there's no narrative to it whatsoever. So is the player superfluous? Uh, do you know what it's like? It's, like? it's like those early days of reading the codexes where it was just, just chucking stuff at you f for the sake of chucking stuff right, at you. Right, so do you need to be deep into the fluff to actually understand this game and enjoy it? No. No? No, you won't enjoy this game even if you are deep into the fluff. <laughs> okay. Because what happens is I, you I will... Thought, I thought that might be the saving grace. No, what happens is you will land on a square that's a double red, and you'll end up fighting a Carnifex and an Eldar somebody. Right. And it's like, what? Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, you'll end up fighting a, a, a Chaos Marine and a Killican. What? And the fighting involves just rolling the dice and adding it to your number. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. I thought... Okay, I'll forgive it. It's, it's very random. There's no possibility of creating any narrative to this because it's just so all over the place. It's not like Firefly, where you feel like you're gradually getting you're closer and closer. You're working your way through what they would have done in the series. This just feels like you're an idiot, right, well, jumping from one side <laughs> right. of the galaxy to the other. Here, here's a question for you. Say, do you roll for your movement, yeah? Yeah, you roll for your movement. Right, so I roll for my movement. I get, well, one's not very useful. I get a six. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're giving yourself but, right. Yes. So I've got a six. Yeah. I can decide to go left or right. Yeah. Correct. Oh, well, right. you can go either direction. Yeah, you can go either. You're not going around the Monopoly style, Lloyd. <laughs> right. Because so, no, literally, I was sitting the there thinking yeah. 40k Monopoly for a while. No. Here's the question: Do I have to use that full six movement, or can I stop at some point along? No, there? you have to use the full six movement. Okay, that's just stupid. Well, it, it's it's how the game works. But there's there's no tactics to it then. Yeah. Yes. There. Correct. Correct. Well, your tactics is in collecting things, right? Mm -hmm. When you get to a particular square, there's a square over here on this side of the board, guys, where you can buy things. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about equipment. You can go there, you turn over three cards, you get to buy one, and you spend your influence. You know those Aquilas that I was talking about? Or sorry, Aquilas? Yep. You spend those to buy these. So you can buy storm bolters, you can buy frag grenades, four swords, power fists, all what, that kind of what's stuff. What's the limit to what you can carry? Your tactical play 
Um, I don't think there, there is a limit. There might be a limit. Because um, if there's a limit, then there's some tactics because you would be getting rid of some. Yeah, there's also tactical play in terms of these. These are called your power cards. And power cards give you like special powers. Barter. Play at the start of your experience phase. You can discard any number of your assets and gain three influence for each and then discard this card away. That's a way of getting money to go back there to buy. Yeah, so Other things are rebuild. renown. At the end of your movement phase, Test Cunning 12, if you pass, take one asset, but not a relic, uh, from a, a player in your area. So you would only play that if you'd landed on the same square uh, as, a, as a, another player. Right, the one problem I'm having. One right. other thing you do, just to, to okay. cut it, you can pick up corruption, okay? So you okay, can be corrupted so, and stuff. Yeah. So at times it'll tell you to pick up corruption. So in this one here, you've, uh, you've dropped that over, it's got a three on it. Mm -hmm. If you have two corruption and you pick this up, that would make three, it means you'd have to resolve it. If you don't have any corruption, or if you've won corruption, you pick that up, you wouldn't have to resolve it. If you okay, had four... So each you of those up, cards yeah. counts as one corruption. Yes, so, so you, what you, you would, trying to you would keep avoid that. on the actual card itself. Right. My difficulty with this is, though, that it's... I was expecting another mechanic, right, where we could interact as players and maybe help each other out. Yeah. Because very quickly you find yourself in a battle. I've seen a battle where you've had four opponents, um, like a, a Carnifex, a Bloodthirster, um, what do you call your high up Eldar guy, Asmarin or something uh, like that? Um, the Avatar of Kian. Uh, well, Kill him into Kian. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some squig or something. Yeah. Okay. Squigath. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it is, it is as random as that. You die, or you take a one health point, you move away, and they sit there. And then the next person just randomly lands on it, and then has to battle yeah, them as well. But if you can't I have thought, tactics even in buying your equipment, because it's random when you land on the bloody shop. Yes, yes, there's randomness there too. But I thought, if as players, you know, we could say, well, actually, I will come to your rescue. I'm a space marine. I will come to your rescue, and I will fight them in return for such and such. Yeah. And you do a part of some Spartacus style, style, you know? Yeah, it's, um, yeah so, so the chance to help each other so or screw each other over. What you're telling me yeah. is the players never interact? Players never interact. There is absolutely uh, zero interaction, other than that? every now and again, if you land on the same square, I can screw you over by taking some of your stuff. That's it? That's it. What's but the point? You may as well just. If sit. I'm wrong, guys, please post below. There's got to be more to it. Otherwise, you could just sit in your pants in your room and play. Yeah, by play alone. Well, and you, you would have uh, nearly the same experience. Yes, it says it's for two to four players, and the only reason it's for two players is you have to beat somebody. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> well, so it's not even a challenge of beating the game. Uh, if you play it long enough, will you win the game? So you could sit in your pants in your room and play this and beat yourself. <laughs> uh, no, yes, no, you no. could. Here's the question. If you play this long enough, someone will win, yes? Yes. Right, so there's no way for both of you to be knocked out and just lose the game. The game itself cannot beat you. No, because once you die, you pick another character and you start again with that character. That just sounds like a plodding session. It, it is. It's. It's. Right, enough. It's got to be more to it, though. They wouldn't go to the ball. Surely they wouldn't go to the ball making something as gorgeous looking as this. If there's not more to it. If I'm wrong, guys, please tell me. But, you know, I apologize. The components are beautiful. Yep. If you're into your 40K, you, you may enjoy this because you'll you'll pick up lots of bits and pieces of background here and yeah, there. And even if it's just a collector's but, piece for your collection. But you will not pick it up in any meaningful way that it, that it gives you any kind of a narrative yeah. story to this. It's, it's a random adventure across the 40K universe that makes no sense so on that depressing note Shall bugger we, that let's fold the board get, up. get that out of the way okay let's, let's get this out of the way i'm going to pick things up a bit so whenever whenever i realized after having played this because i I'd booked this into this particular show because i wanted to show it off when i realized um yeah um i decided i'm going to throw another game for the weekend in yep uh, so this time, let's move all of that up there out of the way. All right, so we're just swiping and that out. To there. rescue the show, I'm going to bring out a cracking, okay. cracking little game. Okay, I'm not tidying this up. Ready for Halloween. It's called Zombie Dice. Steve Jackson at his finest. Now, the beauty of this is, this is the same four players. However, this, this game is going to have you grinning in two turns. Because yeah. you're just going to smile. And so, it's from two to however many you like. Oh, the unboxing is simple. 
dice. There's your dice. Okay. Now, uh, you've got green dice, towards you've got yellow dice. Move it towards Justin. Okay, so let me get them towards Justin. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give okay, so you've got green dice. You have a lot of green dice, okay? Green dice have more brains and more walking on them. And you, you, only one side that's a shot. Um, yellow dice have, I believe, two sides that's a shot, yep. okay? Um, then red dice have, I think it's three sides yep. that's a shot. So what happens is... Well, let's quickly play around. Well, yeah. Do you know what? It's easier to show you than, than to try and do it. So you yeah. put all the dice in there, yeah. you give it a shake, and then I pick three dice at random. I'm not allowed to look. I'm just picking three at random. Yeah. I got a green, a yellow, and a red. I roll them, and I got... Shot by a green. I'm shot, lucky. Shot in the face. I got a yellow brain, and I got a walk. Yeah. So the walk, I could, if I choose to go again, I can... Use the walk, and I grab another two yep. to make that three. Oh, good. Roll. And I roll again. This time I got two walks and another shot in the face. Now, here's the one. thing. You're trying to collect brains. You're trying to collect 13 brains, okay? No, no, you mean brains. Brains. Right. But if you get shot in the face three times as a zombie, you're, you're dead. dead, okay? In this case, I don't want to take another chance. I'm going to keep my one brain. I'm going to put these back in, and it's Justin's right, so turn. So you, ta you tally that up, you have a brain. If I have a counter, do you know what? Talisman, you're going to come to, or Relic, you're going to come to my rescue. I'm going to use these little things uh, as counters. I have one brain. Okay, so. this is not a good set for your first roll. Two okay. yellows and a red. Yep. I might die on roll one. Good. Three nope. runaways. Three runaways, so you have to roll them again. Yep. One Ooh, shot. one shot in the two face, runaways. two runaways. Ideally, you want a green here to save things I've up a bit. Green. You got a green. Let's see what you got. Two brains, two shots. You'll probably want to stop at that point. Actually, I'm going to do what we always do downstairs. I'm going to be greedy and go for it because it's still round one and no one's near the 13th. Yeah, fair enough. So you, he pulls out three fresh dice because he has no runs to reuse. Yeah, and if I'm lucky, I can maybe get two more brains here. Yes. Yeah, so two I'm more brains. You're on four brains. Four brains, and there, I'm happy to stop. Right. So, pass so to Lloyd. Um, Justin, in this case, if you got little blood counters, so I'd give him four wee counters. Yep. All right, Lloyd, you pick three at random. You don't need to tell your shots, then your shots refresh every your time. Your shots yep. refresh every time. Three yep. at random. Yeah, um, three at random. Once you find your brains, even if you get shot next round, you keep them. Yep, Th those brains aren't going anywhere now. I have eaten those brains now. They're his brains. Bye. Two brains in yellow. Oh, yeah. Here that, we go. That'll be good. Oh, oh so you got one brain, one, one. one shot in the face. One um, run away. One run away. You add another two to that. If you want to continue, you could stop, but you won't. Yeah, you could I'm stop at this stage if you wanted. But no, no, no. You have to re-roll that one as well. Re -roll okay. That. Yep. okay. Oh, oh four, four shots to the, to the face. So you lose that. And Nothing works. Work. Okay, right, so you, you pass still, that back. I'm still in the game, but I have no brains. You're still in the game, but you've no brains. Yeah, currently, you're, okay? you're on the back foot now. So I'm gonna do it. Uh, three brains, or uh, sorry, three, three dice. dice, and two shots to the face. One brain. I'd probably just stop at that point and take the one brain, and so on and so forth until you right. get the thirteen. Until someone hits thirteen. Although I did see one time when we were playing this. Yeah. We were rolling for forty-five minutes trying to finish the game. <laughs> It's fun. It's it a, is it's a quick, incredibly fun. Well, I say it's a quick. It's an easy game. You know, within within a few minutes there, you picked it up. Within one minute, he knew the game. You've never seen it before. Uh, well, if you've got some drinks and stuff like that, you could have it that you take a shot. If we play this Halloween night, drinking game. We're oh, going yeah. we're gonna play it that you take a shot. Um, I'm gonna make monkey's brains. Monkey's brains. Monkey's brains. Monkey's brains is a kind of like a round glass. Uh, okay, and you put. Uh, let me see, you put <laughs> cherry brandy. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. And then you get Bailey's, an Irish cream. Yeah, it's a chocolate liqueur. And you gradually pour that in the middle and it doesn't mix with the cherry brandy. The two won't mix. It'll just sit as a blob, a gray matter blob in the middle of the red. All right. And it looks like a bleeding brain. That's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. And then you, you down that in one. So I'll make monkey's whoa, brains. Whoa, whoa. In one. Yeah. So I'll make monkey's brains, and well, what we'll have is when you're shot, you, you have to down the monkey's brains. All right, brains. I vote no live cast on that one. Yeah, so anyway, guys, um, one last thing that I've got to do. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Relic, 
Relic gets my recommendation if you just fancy, if, if you're, you're really into your 40K and you want it, the, the components are beautiful, the, but the game for me as a game just doesn't really work. However, Zombie Dice, Last I could not recommend it enough. Everybody should have that in their collection that if you've just got a group of friends over, you That's, can have even great if you're crack on the train with that. Or something, right, you've love, got a table seat. I love yeah. these really quick to jump into games that you're being mm. yeah. out. Okay, um, finally, I'm going to announce the winner of the Mercs House 4 set. It is Waffle Garcia AZ from YouTube. Congratulations, mate. That's there for you. Yeah, get Fill in touch. In, yeah, get in touch. Fill in the claim form, and we will get that off to you. Guys, thanks for watching. If you fancy it, why not join up to Backstage? Backstage is basically what keeps it all going, keeps it all ticking along. We have a great show, which is an extension of this show called XLBS. We've got a load of stuff we're going to talk about in there. Avengers, I've got to talk to you about yeah, the Avengers. Well, one thing, just for those of us who might be tuning in for the first time, if you're looking for the XLBS or Backstage, you go to beastofwar.com. It's a little paid service we have on there, which yeah. keeps the lights on, as Warren was saying. And it, XLBS always comes out on a Sunday morning. Yes. So, yes. guys, um, thank you very much for watching. We hope we catch a lot of you on Backstage. Uh, until then, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.